Okay, hi guys, welcome to the first ever tutorial on this YouTube channel. Interesting times. Today we're going to be exploring editing raw photos in DaVinci Resolve. So to start off, why would you want to do that? For anyone who has used Resolve, you know how powerful the color page is for color grading your videos. And so I've come up with a workflow that works pretty well. I'm going to be sharing that. Let's go. The most important thing when we are editing in Resolve, we are not destroying the image because again, you know, the reason why we all shoot raw, I believe, we want to capture the most amount of information, we want to retain the most amount of detail. And so whatever software we use, we want to make sure that that is preserved above everything else, above the creative look and yeah. So the first thing is that we're dealing with Sony ARW files. I'm using an A7 IV. So these are the files that come in. Now, Resolve does not recognize any of these files. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert these things into DNG files. So I'm using Adobe Digital Negative Converter and I'm going to be leaving a link in the description so you guys can go and download. Basically what it does is it's going to convert all of it to digital negatives in this DNG format and that's going to be readable by Resolve. So I'm just going to click the folder going to go ahead and export the same folder. All these are the stock settings so I'm not really doing anything else and then I'm going to hit convert. It's going to convert so once it's done, you're going to see you basically have your DNG files. So what I like to do now is basically bring these DNG files into a new folder just for sake of keeping everything clean. Here's where it's going to get interesting. Because you are going to be editing your photos in a timeline, you are going to have to kind of separate out. And this is basically what we're going to do next, which is separating your portrait and your landscape shots. Because we're going to have a timeline that's going to be for your portrait shots and a timeline for your landscape shots. I'm going to select all the landscape shots, which I have quite a bit. I'm going to be dropping them into a landscape folder. And one more for portraits. You know what, I'm just going to use the word vertical. Like, bruh. Bruh! Oh my gosh. Now we can go into Resolve and this is where we're going to be setting up the project. I am currently using Resolve 19 Beta. This works with free version, Resolve 18.6. Okay, we're going to create a new project and we're going to basically just name it Photo Editing. Now, this is where it gets interesting. We're going to come into our project settings and we're going to basically select for timeline resolution. We're going to be selecting the native resolution of whatever our photos are. So for these A74 files, they are 7008 by 4672. So 7008 done. And timeline frame rate can keep the same because we're dealing with stills. And basically all this, no change. We're going to come to image scaling and that's where we're going to change a few things as well. We're going to set the interlace quality to high. We're going to go to mis mismatched resolution files. We're going to put it as scale entire image to fit. And basically this will follow the same. Now, color management. This is important. We're going to go into a DaVinci YRGB. For our timeline color space, we're going to hit DaVinci white gamut and intermediate. And I'm going to explain why we're going to use this in a second. And our output color space is going to be in sRGB because photographs are usually in a sRGB color space. Now we can import our files in. In fact, I'm just going to drop in both. As you can see, we are seeing our DNG files. For some weird reason, vertical files show up this way. So what we're going to have to do is kind of go into the clip attribute and we are going to have to rotate these things yeah so that we can get a proper i don't know why this happens but it is what it is a minute ago i said that we're going to create two timelines basically one for your landscape shots and one for your portrait shots because we are going to be editing things on a timeline level this current timeline that i have is set up in horizontal orientation so i'm going to be dropping in the horizontal clips now, I'm going to go into my timelines. I can now duplicate this and basically set this to a vertical resolution. And I'm just going to name these things for the sake of 
this tutorial, we're going to work in the landscape timeline. So as you can see, we have our shots. Now, this is where the fun happens. We're going to go into our color page and we're going to drop down this camera raw. So if you don't know, Resolve can handle raw video, right? So these are the same settings that we're going to be using to control our camera's raw data. For decode quality, we're going to set it to high res. We're going to set this to clip. We basically have access to everything, but we are working in a DaVinci wide gamut workflow. So there are two things that we have to do. For those of us who are familiar with color grading video, this should be something that we all do all the time, which is basically doing a color space transform to get our sRGB into a DaVinci wide gamut and then doing the same thing on the reverse end so that we convert everything back to sRGB. I'm gonna go ahead, set this up. sRGB. Okay, I'm gonna go into DaVinci wide gamut, intermediate. In terms of tone mapping, we're not gonna do anything. All right, we're just going to leave the image as is. And on the flip side, I'm just going to copy and paste and flip. And then for tone mapping, we're going to use DaVinci. In terms of our input, um, max input, we're going to set this to 10,000 and we're going to limit the output so that we don't get any clipping. So basically on a timeline level, again, what you see is that everything in between here is going to be in your DaVinci wide gamut color space, right? So what, again, you know, why do we want to work in this DaVinci wide gamut? It's because it is a very large color space and so we want to be doing all our edits there so that we're not losing any information, we're not clipping anything. And then at the very end, we're going to bring everything back into sRGB because your photos are probably going to be viewed on the internet and so the internet's color space, I guess, is Rec. 709 for video and for photos, it's sRGB. So that's basically what we're doing. We have actually set everything up properly and now we can go ahead and edit the shot. If I use things like, you know, exposure, you can see that it is, yeah, it is basically editing accordingly. You can drag down my highlights as you can see. I can make changes to my color temperature. So really a lot of flexibility and at this point, it is basically your creative freedom, how you want to edit. So as you can see, most of the photos that come in will be a bit bland looking. They don't have a lot of contrast. They don't have a lot of saturation, but that's where we can go and add that in. How you go about it from this point, it is your creative intent. You can use your primaries, you can use your long wheels. Personally, I like to stick to the camera raw to get the image in a good place before I do any other smaller adjustments. So things like highlight, color temperature, I always use camera raw tab. Again, I'm not going to go through color grading 101. At this point, it is your creative intent, what you want to do. You can use basically all the tools in Resolve is now at your disposal. There is one thing that I want to show, which is cropping. Something that we do a lot in photography, we want to crop, we want to change our composition. How do we do that in this workflow? Well, you can just add a transform and yeah, basically you can, you know, you can do whatever you want. I will say, however, make sure that you are following the same principles as color grading your video clips, which is to take a good look at your scopes, make sure that nothing is clipping, make sure that nothing is going out of hand, because again, you know, you don't want to break the image. So now, how do I set this up to export? So we're going to go to our deliver. Again, I'm using keyboard shortcuts for everything. So now, in terms of the export, what do you want to do? You want to export it as a JPEG codec. I'm going to leave it at YUV 4208 bits. Resolution, again, this resolution can be whatever resolution you want to export it at the full resolution of your camera. That's fine. I'll put a link to an aspect ratio calculator. Make sure the aspect ratio is proper because you screw up on the aspect ratio, everything is going to be screwed up. So I can, you know, down sample this to 24 megapixels if I want. Frame rate, again, doesn't make a difference. Whatever you choose. Compression, I usually set it to 100. I come to my color space tag, set it up as sRGB, force everything to the highest quality. In terms of our render, we want to hit individual clips. We want to basically export everything as individual clips. So I'm going to be using the source name. Select my location and basically hit export. Once you're done, you can basically see that it has exported. I've just dumped it in my downloads folder. 
So yeah, that's actually the end of the tutorial. Again, today wasn't so much on the editing itself. It is really more to create a workflow so that you can import, manage, and then export your photos all within Resolve. And I'm going to be leaving a link to the project itself in the description. You guys can go and download that. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video on how I edit within Resolve and that's getting into the creative part. You know, maybe creating a film look within Resolve. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. I'll be sure to answer all of them or like maybe Google if I don't know the answer. Alright, bye.